Okay, I thought I'd just do another quick video on this uh, alien interview thing that was just uh, covered uh, again by one of our, our favourite uh, gullible buffoons, uh, Kremlin Jones here. So let's just have a very quick look at this. As I said, this is late in the series. In fact, it's quite close. Okay, now this is the... Uh, uh, this is, I can't remember what his, what they say his, his pseudo, pseudonym is here. He's wearing sunglasses. Um, I suspect his voice is disguised because we would recognise it, because he's probably one of the UFO uh, piffle peddlers. He's probably been peddling a sort of piffle for a very long time. What we can see from this is... He's got a he's got a fairly thin beard. Okay? He's got a fairly thin beard. And he's wearing sunglasses. I can just about see that he's wearing sunglasses there. Okay. Um well, let's just let this play on a bit. So the, uh, let's go back slightly. Stroll officers say good dog when he comes to put some force straight to sleep. Does the vet try to reassure the animal just before he spades it? If you want to watch this, but... <laughs> okay. So, I think, uh, I think this is one of the well-known uh, UFO piffle peddlers. And I think that's why his voice is disguised. I think that's why he's in silhouette. Obviously, the alien is a fake because it's uh, extremely dark. There's no sound. The sort of thing you'd pick up on, you know. <laughs> People would say, "Well, that's that 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 sound is, you know, from a movie." You know, if there was any chirping of the alien or anything like that, you know, the alien apparently says it's from the Pleiades. Why doesn't the alien call its home star system? <laughs> Why, why does the alien call its home star system what we call it? Why wouldn't he say he's from so-and-so? You would know it as the Pleiades. Pleiades. And, uh... OK, well, I'm just going to uh, get a better view of this guy. And there's a couple of other points that I would like to make. I think... I, I, I think... I think I know who this is. Okay, so let's just just move it on a bit. Okay, we'll get back to uh, who I think it is and why I think it it is that particular person in a minute. But let's just have a quick look at this. The move usually use. It's usually like they have a. It's usually like a glove puppet, so it has a place. Let's just see if we can see this any better. No, we can't really. So I'll turn the brightness right up on it. Um, I don't think we ever see this, whatever this is. Is this supposed to be a hand? We never see this open and close. Um, I think I said before when I did a video about this, it's uh, it's probably a rubber alien head uh, with a hand inside it. I mean, ben Emily Jones says, well, you know, it's probably someone in a black in, in black behind it manipulating it, but you'd be able to see that. Well, in this sort of lighting, you wouldn't be able to see that. You're not going to be able to see that at all, are you? They say that uh, they start uh, that the alien leans forward, and then they start, they start looking directly in its eyes with the torch. Now, if the room is blacked out, supposedly because it, uh, you know, the the alien can't stand light, and where it comes from is a is a very dark, is a very dark environment. That's why it's got the really big eyes, um, <laughs> and they're they're keeping the room dark for its comfort. Uh, shining a torch in its eyes is not really going to be the way <laughs> the way to go, is it? Okay, so let's just uh, have a look at this. Let's move that back a bit. So you can put so your hand inside and move it like that. An operator, a puppeteer, will do that. Or it's a marionette. It has very thin strings which don't show up on film, which dangle from above. And, and there's an operator above with. No, a... there's no strings there. You can see it's 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 a rubber alien head. And there's something in front of it, so you can't see the you can't see the rest of its body. That might even be a mirror in front of it, holding the strings. Now. Um... It's not a marionette, you can, you'll be able to see very clearly in a minute it's not a marionette. 
But it's also not a glove puppet because several people have enhanced this image. There's not very much to enhance, is there? You can't say that's not a glove puppet. I mean, there could easily be someone behind there with a... Uh, you know, even if, they're, even if they're crouching down and the alien head is on a broom handle, you know, with a, some sort of... Um, one of those things that you get things off of a shelf with. You know, you could make it move around with that and you could make it tilt forward and back with something as simple as that. And they, and you can see more of the background. And if, if it was a glove puppet, you'd, see, you'd be able to see the guy probably dressed in black, sitting behind the alien. You don't sit with his hand inside the alien's head. You don't see that. Uh, well, you don't, no. Um, <laughs> but the scene is very, very dark, isn't it? You're, you're not going to see that. <clears throat> you see, there's the... That, you see, I'm not, I'm not sure. This, it's a, this electronic device, I've never seen anything like that before. It's totally it looks to me that looks like an ECG. If the creature has a heart, it may be monitoring the creature's heartbeat. This thing here is talking about. Now, what do I think this is? This is, I think this is a mirror at an angle. And I think over here. According to Burlington, you know, the creature's eyes narrow and move some. And I think over here, out of shot, so you can't see it, is an oscilloscope. Now, late, later on, Ben says to this other guy, this uh, the, the second-hand car salesman, I've never seen any medical equipment like that. And he said, no, he's done deep-dive research into it and there's there's no piece of medical equipment that will, that will do this. And, of course, an oscilloscope isn't a piece of medical equipment. It's a piece of electronic test equipment. And I've got one here, actually. I'll, I'll demonstrate this. I'll demonstrate this effect. But this is not looking directly at the oscilloscope. This is a mirror, I think, at an angle, across the table like that. And I think the oscilloscope is out of shot over there. And this is just reflecting what's shown on the oscilloscope. And uh, I, can, I can show you, I can, I can duplicate that. You get actual uh, movement in the creature's eyes. You, can see, you do see, actually, the eyelid comes down slightly there. I mean, well, yeah, but if it's a rubber alien head, why not? Yeah, yeah even even the moving around there the even the colour, even the colour of this little dancing line here, I think, is indicative of an oscilloscope. So they, they tend to be green. They certainly did um, when this was filmed. I was going to say this is fair use, but I mean, I'm not, <laughs> not exactly sure who I say it's fair use. Well, I mean, fair use related to. I mean, who is the who is the um, well, no one's admitted to making it, so yeah, yeah, you can you, you can use it to your heart's content, and that's a better indication there. I think that this is actually a green vertical line. I do actually have an oscilloscope from that time period, so I'll I'll show you. I might even be able to find a mirror, see if I can duplicate the, the effect exactly. But if I if I can't find a mirror, I'll certainly be able to show you that that effect on an oscilloscope. Mm. Intellect. Who is of, of whom is this the intellectual property? Do I have to uh, say to some scientist, Area 51, on a secret project, I'm, I'm using your video, mate, you know? Um, oh, OK, I think I'll stop that there. Um, it was this this that I wanted to show you here. And uh, the other comments, of course, that, that I just made. So I'll just move it on. OK, so now we're back to our mystery man here. Well, the voices of the project. Now, remember, he's got a... You know, you can see he's got a fairly thin beard. See that on the side of his face there? Fairly thin beard. He's got a fairly thin beard. Extends down here. Yep. Voice is disguised because I suspect we would recognise it. A bit more brightness there. He's a man who likes... 
a stripy tie. Okay, so he's a man that likes a stripy tie and he's got a very thin beard. Uh, remember that? And we'll move on. And if we look at our mystery man just a little more closely, we can see that, as I said, he likes a stripy tie. Here he's got a thin, wispy beard. And if you look at the shape of the guy's body, he's got a bit of a paunch here. A bit of a paunch. Well, tie comes down, there's a bit of a paunch. Okay. Now, uh, this is who I think this is. I think if you turned the brightness up on the scene and took the sunglasses off, I think this is who you would see. If you look, he's got likes a stripy tie. He likes a stripy tie. He's got a bit of a paunch. About the right place, isn't it? The paunch. The wispy beard. And who is this? This is our old mate Robert Bob Dean. Another UFO whistleblower. I think that's who that guy is. I think that's Bob Dean. He's got a very distinctive voice, Bob Dean. And I think that's why it's disguised. And uh, Ben Emlyn Jones, I'll see if I can find the clip. He said Bob Dean actually wept when he saw this video. And I thought, yeah, he was, he was probably, he probably he was probably crying with laughter that people were taking it seriously. People were swallowing this bloody nonsense. Hook, line and sinker. I'll see if I can find Ben Emlyn Jones uh, telling us that uh, Bob Dean, this guy here, <laughs> wept when he saw the alien interview video. And I think, uh, I think he wept all right because he was... <laughs> he couldn't believe people were falling for it because he's wearing a... He likes a stripy tie. He has the same paunch. He has a distinctive voice, which is why it would have to be disguised. And he's got a wispy beard. He's, he's got a wispy beard, Bob Dean. So that's who I think the mystery man is. All right, let's just uh, move this on a bit. Okay, now this is where the dynamic duo here are going to tell us. They've done lots and lots of research, and Ben's been in the National Health Service for 20 odd years, and they've never ever seen anything like that uh, that piece of that, that piece that, that piece of equipment that was monitoring the alien, the thing with the with the uh, with the with the uh, the uh, the vertical green line. Okay. Bleachens information. I I said to myself, you know, I I'm I'm at a I'm at a I'm at a kind of a crossroads here. Where, what do I do? Where do I go? And I first started analyzing the bizarre physiological monitor in the film. The bizarre physiological monitor in the film. That's the little dancing vertical green line. That's because these guys have never seen a bloody oscilloscope before. They've never seen, <laughs> they've never seen an oscilloscope <laughs> in that mode. They're used to seeing an oscilloscope with a horizontal line. Yeah. And it will it, it, uh, uh, and it will manoeuvre in a in a sort of up and downwards. It will sort of wobble up and down, or it will, it will demonstrate a wave. It will show you a waveform, but they've never actually seen an oscilloscope in that particular mode. And it's a blip that goes up and down. It doesn't go horizontal. Yeah, it's totally so, bizarre. Because I, I mentioned this the last time. I've spoken to Andrew about it. It's a blip that goes up and down. It's totally bizarre. Hmm as well. I, I, I was a hospital porter for 23 years. I know what a medical equipment looks like. This is clearly some kind of electronic device, um, and the blip makes me think it's a monitoring some kind of heartbeat. Um, <laughs> if this creature has a heart, it's right. It doesn't, so, uh, but it doesn't look like any I'm familiar with. So I talked to Jaime Busan, and, and who's a journalist in Mexico, that he mm. took this film Good old Jaime. years ago, yeah, to 15 hearts, 13 cardiologists and heart surgeons. And he simply said, look, you know, they all said to him, look, it, it looks like this creature, when it starts coughing, is having the same, is having the same coughing uh, uh, attacks that is in sync 
with the blink going up and down, that he's having some sort of cardiac arrest, um, although with the type of heart and lung sac that this creature has, that, that the blip is coinciding with the creature's movements. And all of the surgeons said this, I find that hard to believe that somebody working some sort of laser or the, or the blip can also be in sync with the puppeteer, where they could have it where it would fool 13 cardiologists that this <laughs> being is having a fake heart attack. Yeah. So they, uh, well, you could actually uh, you can actually drive the oscilloscope with an audio signal, and just somebody talking in the room, or making a noise in the room, or touching the, a, a probe on the Y amplifier input, will provi will will pro will, will uh, provide that 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 moving vertical line. And uh, I'll give you a demonstration of that uh, shortly. And you can make it in time with anything you want. It's easy. <laughs> They're looking at it from a medical point of view, and of course, it's not a medical piece of equipment. It's a, it's an electronic test piece of test equipment. And the only reason it's in there is because the movie, <laughs> the the alien interview film, is a fake. It's fake. That's why they're using a rubber alien. That's why they're using an oscilloscope to 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 give you the vertical trace. It's not a piece of medical equipment at all, because the whole thing is a put-up job. That yeah. would be really interesting, yeah. So, it's, it's, it has a seizure, it's sort of like it starts jerking right. its head backwards and forwards. Of course, according to the skeptics, you know, there's a, there's a, it's just a guy with a hand inside the, the head mm. moving it like that, like a glove puppet. But of course, then you see, like you say, the, uh, what, however this machine works, and what, we don't know what kind of anatomy this creature has. Does it have lungs like we do, or a heart like right. we do? Um, right. Whatever it is, that monitor is clearly designed, probably designed right. specifically for that species. Well, <laughs> yeah, run-of-the-mill oscilloscope, yeah. It, it, it suddenly becomes a, uh, a specifically designed special piece of equipment for that particular species. Absolute bloody rubbish. Complete and utter nonsense. You said that. Which leads me to... You know, I bet I said, okay, I, I got Andrew, I got um, Jaime's research. I that not gonna cut it, not gonna cut it. I have to go further. I bet. Yeah, yeah, he's right there. It really doesn't cut it. And uh, I'll I'll give you a demonstration, and uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll show you what the green vertical line and uh, you know ma making it go up and down. I'll show you how easy that is to do with a piece of electronic test equipment because the whole thing is faked, and that's what they used to fake it. They used a rubber alien <laughs> and an oscilloscope. OK, let's see if we can get to the demonstration. Oh, hang on, let's see if I can find the bit where he's talking about Bob Dean weeping. <laughs> yeah, I... Um, there's been a bit of a break, actually, between the last bit and this bit, but um, I don't know if I put this bit in or not, where he found three PhDs. Designed, probably designed right. specifically for that species. Well, that's and funny you is, said that. Mm. that which, designed specifically for that species, yeah, sure. Leads me to, you know, I, then I said, okay, I've I got Andrew, I've got um, Jaime's research, I, that not going to cut it, not going to cut it. I have to go further. So I've been doing this mentality in every aspect of the video. And I found three PhDs that did the, the, uh, the history of heart monitors. I contacted them. I fully feel the government is sold my emails right before a Jeff Runt show in, tw in May of 2021. However, much to my to a couple of skeptics, they did not take my sent emails. So I found the sent email to these three PhD uh, uh, people that did the thesis on the physiological monitors, the complete history. All three of them, I wrote them, I sent them the video. I do not know, we do not know what this is. We do, know, do not know that this has ever been manufactured. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that's because they're looking at it from a point of view of physiological heart monitors, not from a run-of-the-mill piece of electronic test equipment. You know, with, with, it's very, very easy to fool people, you know, that, that are not familiar with this sort of thing. Very, very easy to fool people. Um, and uh, they're, they're looking complete, uh, they're the completely different range of equipment. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a demonstration and uh, I'll show you that. Uh, 
I'll show you the scope. These are the historians. So then I call HP and Space Labs. These were the only two companies that had made physiological monitors in the 90s. I talked to, I talked to people in their physiological engineering department, very seasoned veteran engineers. Both men told me, I've never seen that. I've never, I've never um, saw the designs for that. That's not manufactured then, and it's not manufactured. This is 2019. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I've got physiological monitor experts that are telling me they have no idea what I'm looking at. The person at Hewlett Packard said, well, it sounds like a one-off. I said, well, what is a one-off? And he said, if you had a problem and you didn't have a, a device to help with your problem, a bulldozer to help you dig a hole or a monitor or a tester to see if you're picking up gold in the ground or, you know, he said, you would design what's called a one-off. And that's a device that you would design and build to simply help you figure out or monitor a, a, a problem you have in, in the scientific community or whatever. And I said, would you build a special monitor to uh, monitor, would you still build a special device, a one of, to monitor a very bizarre alien heart? And he went, yeah, I would. He didn't yeah. laugh at me. And I went, I covered the phone and I went, oh my God, I don't believe what's happening here. And that really, that's when I fell down the, down the rabbit hole of something is wrong. Let me go back to, mm -hmm. on the bottom of this film is DNI 27. Yeah, okay. So there you go. So there's, uh, there's Ben and this other guy here, John Stewart, uh, discussing how, uh, uh, how uh, impossible it is to have this, uh, how no one's ever seen none of these medical people, none of these engineers, these PhDs, I've ever seen a device that can produce a uh, flickering vertical green line. Personally, I've never heard anything quite so ridiculous. So uh, I think I'll just get on with the demonstration and I'll show, I'll show you myself um, producing exactly the same effect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'll give you a demonstration of how easy that is to, uh, to do. So I can't really get the lighting right, but you know, I haven't got a mirror, so I'm just going to have to show you the scope. And when I talk, I, I, I can have it going up and down when I talk like that, or uh, not at all, uh, or very occasionally, like one there, one there, one there few there you know as I'm talking you can see the uh, you can see the green line going up and down and up and down and up and down and you can see what I mean about the the green line it's a green line and in the video it looks to me like a vertical green line it's the sort of thing you see on a run of the mill oscilloscope a piece of electronic test equipment so there you go dots not moving at all uh, and what's actually happening there is I'm just touching the end of the probe to make that happen. You can see how easy it is to fool people that have got no idea about any of this stuff. I'll just turn the light on so you can see what I've got here. There you go. This is a run-of-the-mill dual trace uh, oscilloscope. This one dates from 1986. I bought it brand new back then. Um, and uh, all that, uh, with, with these things, you can actually you can modulate the X and the Y amplifiers separately, so you can form different patterns if you want. And all I've done is I've got the X amplifier there doing nothing at all. That's the horizontal line. I've got the time base turned off, so it's, it's not scanning a line across. And all I'm doing is modulating the Y amplifier, the vertical axis amplifier, with a bit of noise that my body's picking up from the air. And you can see. There's the, uh, there's your, there's your impossible to achieve. No PhDs could understand it. Vertical line. See how easy that is to do. I'll make it smaller. 
going to make it smaller or bigger. See how easy that is to do. I haven't used this for a long time, it's a little bit gritty, so a little bit, it's a little bit noisy, which is a little, little bit of jittering on there. But you get the point, don't you? I mean, just by doing this, I'm getting the nice vertical line. And it can be just sitting there, doing nothing. It can be, it can be going with my speech. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, it can it can not be going with my speech. One two three four five six seven eight nine ten. One two three. 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 See how easy that is to do, because the alien interview video is a fake. They used a piece of good old electronic run of the mill electronic test equipment to do the vertical line effect. Um, rubber, rubber alien head, you know, someone manipulating it from the inside that would explain how it can sort of move, you know, how the actual eyebrow, if you like, can move. I'm not sure I saw that, but if it's a rubber head, it's going to be flexible, it's going to move with someone manipulating it from the inside. The picture is so dark for that reason, you know, if, if it was like this, you can see detail in the picture, you'd be able to see what was going on. It's dark so that you can't. We can't hear the alien because no one knows what an alien sounds like and if they tried to put sound on for the alien if they try to put audio on for the alien it's people are going to laugh at it and of course we've got Bob Dean in silhouette whose voice is disguised because we'd all recognize it we can see his paunch is the same uh, the mystery man's paunch is the same as Mr. Dean's the style of tie is the same as Mr. Dean's you know he likes a stripy tie he's got a, he's got the wispy beard you can see that in silhouette so it's a fake. Well, as always, uh, many thanks for watching. Maybe I'll catch you again.